that if you've been here for the year seven one, because there is some repetition, but hopefully you will still find it useful. Um, the end of the evening really is to try and give you as much information as we possibly can to help support your child through year eight. So it's a similar format to the evening that we did last year, the year seven one, but obviously with year eight specific information. And we will be breaking up into workshops into slightly smaller groups once we've been passed through the, um, the introduction. I do use this slide a lot, and I don't apologise for using it a lot. I think it's a really important slide, really for people to get to grips with exactly what we're talking about in terms of your child's time in school. It goes incredibly quickly. The fact that you are sitting here as Year 8 parents, having only very recently been sitting in this hall as Year 7 parents, for example, makes you realise just how quickly time passes. We've had a number of these evenings, um, and one of the ones that I did was for Year 11 parents. And for Year 11 parents, it was quite an alarming slide that I put up, because I didn't obviously put that one up. I put one up that said 95 days. Because essentially, in Year 11, there are 95 school days before the exams start. And so it's really important to think about school experience in, in a holistic way. It isn't just about one year. It isn't just about getting your second right. It isn't just about making good choices in year nine. It's about making the whole experience as meaningful as possible. And what we have tried to do is plan our curriculum so it allows that to happen. You will be aware that there have been significant changes in the education system, significant curriculum changes. And I can't stress that enough. If you've had children previously who've been through the national curriculum, Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4, and you will think you are very familiar with the system. It has changed dramatically. Exams are getting significantly harder. The content has been increased significantly for students. And the skills required of those students has changed. So for example, there is a great deal more in terms of memorizing information, learning quotations, learning vocabulary, learning equations. And it's not any kind of philosophical thing, it's not that that's a good or a bad thing, but it's a very real thing. And it's very important for us to get that message across to you as parents, that actually how students are learning now is going to set them up for the future. What we want to achieve is this for every single child. These are our year 11s in August, smiling and happy. And what we do in every year is important, because actually that doesn't just happen because of what happens in year 11, it happens because of what happens Seven, year 8, year 9, year 10, and year 11. We do feel that we are getting something right. We do feel that the information that we are giving, the way in which we are teaching, is effective. And we think it's important just to share some of that with you for a few minutes. 79% of students achieved 5 A star, a star to C, including English and Maths. We picked that because obviously it's a government benchmark, but it's also very significant in terms of moving students to their next level the choices that they want to make. English language, English literature and maths results were in the 80s for all of our students. 100% of students did ACE after C for simple science. 36% of students achieved 5 or more A, A star grades. And 42% of all of our GCSE grades were an A or an A star. The two bullet points at the bottom, potentially less significant, I'm not going to go and explain Progress 8, but again it's another measure. It's an interesting measure, because what that is about is about saying wherever students start is about measuring their progress. So students who in maybe primary schools did, did brilliantly, or in primary school maybe didn't do so well, we are actually charged with ensuring that they make really, really good progress. And one of the things that we are able to do as a school is make sure that they do. So actually, what we have is students achieving a grade better in all eight of their best subjects by being past Chesterton. So it's really important that we get the information to you and that you as parents can support this because we don't do this alone by any stretch of the imagination. We do this because parents like you come to evenings like this and are really engaged with their child's education. It's incredibly important because the children who are ultimately successful are the ones that have the whole package. You'll be aware that we have our feedback books. I'm just going to talk a little bit about those and why they are significant. 
and why as parents, engaging with those is incredibly important. In terms of our assessments, the way we have structured those is to help with this journey, this progression through to year 11. So those assessments are mapped back from year 11 and they use similar language, similar techniques. We do that because we don't want children by the time they leave us not to be fully prepared. We want them for it to be seamless. We want them to be able to walk in with absolute confidence when they do those exams in year 11. You can access that work on the Seesaw app um, and we basically did a lot of kind of trying of that last year. So you could look at us as parents, you could look at English work, you could look at maths work, you could look at humanities work. And I really would urge you to have conversations about what you see. It's really important to talk to your children about what was that particular assessment about? What was it that you were learning that led up to that assessment? <coughs> what do you think you did really well? What are you really proud of in that assessment? What did you, what worked for you? And also, what didn't? What was it in that particular assessment that didn't go particularly well? And how can we work on that? How can we develop that? And some of the workshops will might, tonight will give some information about that. Obviously, supporting with those assessments really important that engaging with homework, so obviously we do have Edmodo, we do put all of our homeworks on there, and I know parents sometimes feel a bit awkward maybe looking at that and trying to make their way through it, but it is important again to have those conversations, because the homework is about consolidation. We do recognise that students who maybe are not as thorough with their homework, or sometimes forget their homework, are ultimately not as successful. Because going back to those, the number of days in school, it's not a lot of time. There is time at home that also needs to be used really, really well. And one of the things we are going to focus on for the students is about how to prepare for assessments and not wait for Key Stage 4 to do that. So next week we have a study day, which is going to be 7, 8, 9 and 10. And it really looks about how best to, to learn, how best to take in information. I'm hoping that will be a really useful day for the students, and please do talk to them about that day, because actually, what we recognise is that students do learn in very particular ways. You will know how best your child learns, but there are some very general things that it's important to, to be aware of. You may feel really um, happy that your child has gone up to their bedroom, they've got their biology workout or whatever it may be, and they are sitting and they are reading it. That's absolutely fine. That's great. But as a way of really fully understanding the information, we recognise that probably you remember about 10% of what you read. If you look at those three bullet points, that is a really good way for how as parents you can support your child in their learning. 70% of what we discuss with others. 80% of what we personally experience. 95% of what we teach others. And those bullet points are really important as parents. Discussing what's been learned. And I'm not saying it every day. It's not, it doesn't have to be the sole topic of conversation over the dinner table. But actually, some discussion about what happens in school is incredibly important. 80% of what we personally experience. On the curriculum website, you will see that we have topics that are being studied. So it might be relevant for their studying history or they're, they're studying volcanoes or whatever it may be. And by looking at those things, and then actually maybe a really interesting trip to, to one of the local museums or to a library, to whatever it may be that supports that learning, is really going to help students. So, and similarly, 95% of what we teach others. That's really significant. I myself, when you teach something, you understand it. You really get to grips with it. If your child can teach you something that they've learned, you know that they get it. You know that they fully understand it. So if they can teach you what they've learnt in maths or what they've learnt in science, you are really, really helping them to consolidate their learning. As I say, using the website is really important. We have the curriculum web pages. They are not absolutely comprehensive. They do not have absolutely everything on there. They wouldn't be a useful resource if they were. They'd be difficult to navigate. But they have key topics key information about what's happening in certain half terms, what assessments are happening, what's being covered. So please do look at those. Similarly, we have a section of the website which is focused on revision, predominantly for Key Stage 4, but again, it's something to have a look at because it will give you some really good ideas about how to support your child to prepare for an assessment or how to help them learn something that they're struggling with. And obviously have a link to see sort of all of it. I've talked a lot, obviously, about the curriculum um, and about how to be successful with that. I do think it's important to realise that it is hard. It's very hard for students. It is a difficult
very important if we're asking people to work hard, they also get the opportunity to play hard. And if you look at the offer that we've got on the website at the moment, please do give it some really careful consideration. There are lots of opportunities at lunchtimes and after school for students of all different sort of tastes, um, interests, etc. Um, teachers give up their time to run those clubs, um, it's their free time, and they're often passionate about those particular things and that's why they're doing it. So please do look through that website with your child because actually those activities are really, really important and really interesting for them. We have some great opportunities in drama, sport, etc. So please do engage with those. And I will, as I always do, talk a little bit about reading. In terms of reading, it is one of the most significant things in terms of helping your child to be one successful and to be fulfilled. It's an amazing thing. And we try really hard at school to make sure that we make our interaction with reading as interesting as possible. So you'll be aware that Mrs. Ellison does an awful lot in the library, but you can also engage with as parents. And this year in particular, she's going to be launching what she calls her reading underground map. It's going to be a very interesting resource, I think, for students and for parents. Each of the tube lines will have a series of fiction and non-fiction texts on them. And so as a child, you can actually pick where you want to start. These are the kind of books I like to read. So if I like to read Harry Potter, actually, it leads me to the next book and to the next book. And that's always a bit quite challenging as a parent. You get them really interested in something, they really like it. What can be the next thing? You don't always have that information at your fingertips, but with this, you will. And we will have all of those books in the library as well. So please do look out for that, because that will be coming out very shortly. A few key um, dates, which are significant. Obviously, we, this will be on the website, we'll also be sending this out. But just to pick out a few things, obviously, common assessment grades are in, the study sort of day that I've alluded to. Progress summary is coming home. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how you'll be receiving that information. We have events like work shadowing, so an opportunity for children to go with their parents to work or to arrange for a work experience opportunity, which is very exciting. And also, at the top, we have the enrichment deadline, and we will have some more letters outside about our enrichment offer. So if you haven't signed up for that, or you haven't made a decision yet about that enrichment choice, please do look out for that, because there are some interesting activities available. And finally, before I hand over to Mr. Alfred, please do make sure that you tell us if there is an issue. It's really important to us that we do know and we can deal with things promptly. We try really, really hard to respond to emails, to respond to phone calls, to respond to conversations that happen as best we possibly can. There's nothing more depressing for me to hear that at the end of a year, somebody feels they've had an issue that they didn't quite feel able to address and we've not been able to sort it out. It's really, really important that if something is worrying you, or there's something not quite working at the moment, that you let us know, so early on in year eight, we can do some things to sort it out. So hand over now to you, Mr. Alfred, and he's going to talk a little bit about how we are going to be giving you future assessment information. Good evening. As we've just heard, it's really important to look at progress and information about your children and if there are issues talk to us about it and we will do something about it. Previously you may have had information via the reports, you may have had uh, some feedback by a seesaw, but generally you've had that once or twice a half term. What I want to do this evening is very briefly introduce you to something that we're launching uh, next week which is providing you with access to lots of the information that we have as teachers. So if you've ever come in to meet one of your teachers, they might have had a, a laptop up, and you would have seen the back of their laptop screen, but on the front, they would have had a system which is just looking at all the information about the conversation that you're having with that teacher. And what we want to do is share that with you as live data. So next week, you'll be getting an email about the Chesterton reporting system, which is a system, a website, which just looks at lots of live information that we have about your child and is accessible to you every single day. It's about being open, you know, we don't hide data from you, but sometimes, historically, it's been quite hard for you to get hold of it.
because we haven't had it on an online platform. You've had to come in or meet the tutor or contact me. It's about being engaged. It's about us saying to you, oh, we've noticed this in this subject, or we've noticed this with attendance. Um, but for you, again, you might notice something in a report that you get three times a year. And until you get that report, there's a long interim period, isn't there, where you might not be able to pick up issues. And as we know, if we can address these issues as quickly as we can, we'll have some really good solutions and outcomes. So it's about being engaged and informed. You will be, as you uh, go through your time at Chesterton, have some important decisions to make. For example, choosing GCSE courses. We generally feel the more informed we can be about those decisions, the better decisions we can make together. And as we say, it's the best place to be able to pick things up that might be going slightly astray and to address them and sort them out quickly. Because there's nothing more frustrating than arriving at the end of the year and having a conversation with a parent where they said, oh, you know, I was a bit worried about this at Christmas time. They think, well, you know, if we had had this conversation, if we'd known, we would have been able to do something about it. And that's what we're trying to do. So it's on the website, and initially you'll just be able to see this information, which is the information that we as teachers have every day. And just an example of a few things that we're going to share with you. It is what we see. So some of it is uh, quite teachery language, but we will give you information about how to uh, consume that. So this can be, uh, this is just an example of grades, so it's subjects, what the uh, progress eight potential is, which is given to us by the DOE, and then how well uh, your child is working at that progress rate, uh, with some rag analysis, red and green analysis, <coughs> we share that with you. Likewise, if a teacher logs into a system, this is what they see for attendance. So you'll be able to see the current live attendance data for your child, what types of activities they're doing, um, you can see how many trips they've been on, you can see whether they're in school or lessons at any moment. So it's about sharing just all the information that we have in school with you. And we really think that will make a big difference in terms of addressing issues and being as successful as you can be. So what do you need to do? Well, look out for an email that will be sent to your Priority One contact, most likely next week. So when you filled in your admission forms, which is over a year ago now, you would have nominated a Priority One contact. There'll be uh, part one of a registration process in that email. We will then send a letter home which contains part two, and that will also contain lots of instructions and guidance on how to use the system. And then all we want you to do is log in, have a look around. We'll do things as we go through the year, like we'll look to put reports on there, so you'll always be able to access uh, your child's report, and keep informed and keep in contact with us. If you have any questions about it, about the curriculum in general, or about the courses your child is following in year eight, feel free to see me at the end of the workshops. I'll be here to answer any of your questions. But for the rest of the evening, you will be split up into different rooms, um, and the faculty teams will come round and visit you one by one.